Welcome back everyone to watching me do science. That's right, this normally would be a video about me playing Minecraft, but it's not. The video is me playing Volts, but what's actually going on is I'm going to talk science about stuff, about science things. Yeah. So, a little while back, I was all like watching science videos on YouTube and I came across this cool video by Minute Physics about immovable object versus the unstoppable force. Very popular question that X-Men sought to fix at some point and never did. Anyways, in that video, he said something really interesting. He said that if you have an unstoppable force, it could be a source of infinite energy. And if you had a source of infinite energy, you could do anything. You could make a super happy, awesome world full of muffins and cupcakes and everything and, and flying magical ponies. Yes, that's right. If we had a source of infinite energy, we could be an equestria. But we don't. The universe is all like, no, you can't have that. And we know about that. So we know all about it. We know exactly all about it. We know how it works and everything. We call it thermodynamics. And thermodynamics has three laws. There's, well, four, technically. The first law is the law of conservation of energy. It says you have a certain amount of energy. You can't get any more. You can't get rid of any of it. It's stuck there. All you can do is turn it from one form into another, which sounds okay. Like, you know, we should be able to keep doing things with that, um, but we can't make any new energy. Unfortunately, the second law really breaks things for us because the second law says that energy is always going to be lost as heat, and you're always going to lose some energy, and it will not be able to do work. In other words, we have things like friction that happen. We have entropy. We have energy lost to sound all these other things where all of a sudden we can't do work. Uh, the second law also says that entropy increases over time, and it says that heat moves from a hot place to a cold place. Then there's the third law, and the third law says that you cannot get to absolute zero, so take that just sort of as like you know a kick while you're down. The second law really breaks things for us, but most perpetual motion machines are of the first law. And in Henry's Minute Physics video, that is the type of machine that we're looking at. So a first law machine is a perpetual motion machine that creates energy, either creating it from nothing or extracting it out of some sort of magical energy source like zero-point energy or the time cube, or just pulling it straight out of the universe, I mean from outside the universe. Um, these are often called free energy, and so I'm going to call them free energy machines, but it's not the same as infinite energy, because infinite energy is infinite, and free energy, while free, is not necessarily infinite. Because a free energy machine does not break the second law of thermodynamics, only the first. And breaking the first, while bad, is not quite as bad, and we're going to see more about that soon. A second law machine, on the other hand, can break the second law of thermodynamics. And actually, even if we couldn't break the first law, if we could break the second law, we'd be, in, we'd be awesome. A second law machine can do lots of things. It might have no friction, and so it would be 100% efficient. It could make things, it could make heat go from cold places to hot places. We have things like this, we call them air conditioners, refrigerators, but you notice that those are really hot. If you ever touch them, like while they're running, they're, they're really hot back there. A true second law machine wouldn't get extra hot. Or it could also make things spontaneously organized, like you snap your fingers, and all your underwear goes back into its drawers, just like Mary Poppins. Living creatures are really good at this. They can organize things pretty well, but it's not spontaneous. So a second law machine is much more powerful than a first, because a second law machine can get rid of entropy, and it can store energy much more easily. A first law machine, however, is what Henry focused on and is what we're going to focus on. I say he focused, he didn't, he just mentioned it, but it's what we're going to focus on, because I was all like, hmm, shower, 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 hey, what if you had a first law machine? Would that really be so bad? I mean, it shouldn't be that bad, right? If you created a really, really small amount of energy, surely that wouldn't break the universe. Surely it wouldn't be practical. So I decided to look into it. What is there, you know, is there a small amount of energy that we could get for free and it wouldn't be practical? Or is just any free energy just so awesome that we can't handle it? I don't know. We'll find out. Our first case is going to be a, a little box, and all of these are going to be little boxes. They're going to be just a, a machine. We're not going to worry about what's inside them, but this little box can produce energy just for free. You just turn it on. It produces free energy. 
And our first little box like this is going to make one microjoule of energy per day. Now, before you get all confused and turn everything off, let's explain a couple terms here. A joule is a unit of energy. A joule is about the amount of energy it takes to flip a light switch or the amount of energy you get from dropping an apple on the ground. A microjoule is a millionth. Micro means millionth, or a thousandth of a thousandth. Or, in other words, one microjoule per day means that it would take one million days to get one joule, which already doesn't sound practical because the amount of energy to flip a light switch is not a lot. Uh, it takes a lot more energy to run that light than it does to flip a light switch. But more on that later. Let's say that we have this box, and it's, it's not a whole, you know, it's just a little bit, but how impractical is it? Well, this box itself is not free. Just because we're breaking the first law doesn't mean we can break it anywhere we want, and it certainly doesn't mean we can break the second law. So the box itself is not free. It costs 10 joules to make. And if we want to make another one, that's another 10 joules. So this particular box, at one microjoule per day, could make another box, could make that 10 joules, or could break even, in 10 million days, or 27,000 years if it were 100% efficient, which it's not because energy will get lost to friction inside the box, it'll get lost to sound, it'll be lost to heat when the box transfers energy to a wire or to a battery or to a machine or some other type, so entropy. It's not 100% efficient, so we'll give it 50% efficiency, which is still really good. Like our current coal plants and solar plants and wind plants, all of those, they're not 50% efficient. Even plant plants aren't 50% efficient. Like, they're, yeah, just, no, no. So, 50% efficiency, that means that this box will take 55,000 years to break even. That doesn't sound practical. Well, what if it, we, we scale it up by 1,000 to uh, box 2? Box 2 is a little bit better. It makes 1 millijoule per day. Oh, well, 1 millijoule, that's a thousandth of a joule. That's a, a lot better, right? At 10 joules to make a box, it takes 10,000 days or 27 years to break even if we were perfectly efficient. We're not. At 50% efficiency, box two will take 55 years just to break even. That's like taking an investment of a million dollars and when you're 20 and you put it away and you say, you, you just get rid of it and you say, I'll come back for it and see how much it's grown. And uh, at the end of that time, like, when you're 75, you come back and you only have a million dollars and it didn't grow at all. And you're like, what? So, yeah, box two, 55 years just to break even. Not practical. Okay, well, what about box three? Box three makes one joule of energy every day. That's pretty good. If it costs 10 joules to make, it should only take 10 days to break even, but efficiency is only 50%. Okay, so it takes 20 days to break even. Not bad, right? 20 days later, you can have another box. And hey, you know what? Maybe the two boxes together can work on something. But more on that in a little bit. Is that practical? It sounds so much better than the other. So is it practical? Let's find out. Machines. These are boxes. They're machines. And machines are best measured with power, not with energy. Why? Because energy is kind of like an, an instantaneous thing. You might look at energy like, how much energy did it take to make my mug that I'm drinking water out of? How much energy am I worth? Like, if I get paid seven fifty an hour, is that a good representation of the amount of energy I do at the job? However, machines are something that do stuff over time. Like, a light bulb is, you don't, like, turn a light bulb on for an instant. You turn a light bulb on for a certain period of time. And so, yeah, you might say, well, it takes a certain amount of energy to run a light bulb for one hour, and twice that to run a light bulb for two hours. But if you just want to know how much energy does it take, like, to run a light bulb, what you're really asking is how much power does that take? So the common light bulb is a 60 watt light bulb, and that's the type that goes on your nightstand. It's not super bright, uh, but it's bright enough to read by. So if you want to read in bed at night, you have a 60 watt light bulb there. And so it's a pretty common thing, and a lot of people are familiar with it. Now a watt is a joule per second. So every second it spits out one joule. A one watt generator gives you one watt of a one watt generator gives you one joule of energy every second and a one watt machine would use one joule of energy every second okay that's not bad so one milliwatt 
is one millijoule per second, one microwatt is one microjoule per second, and so on and so forth. Our first box was one microjoule per day. If we could run it continuously, what would its power be? 12 picowatts. That means 12 trillionths of a watt. That's like one dollar compared to the national debt. That's what this box is like compared to one watt. And we will need to run a 60 watt light bulb. That's, oh man, that's gonna be crazy. Well, our second box, which is at uh, one millijoule per day, that's only 12 nanowatts, which is a 12 billionths of a watt. Okay, you know, that was the one that took 55 years to, uh, to make another box. Our third box, though, that, you know, we could, that was the one that made 20 days, so much better, right? Uh, at one joule per day, which is pretty good compared to the others, that one comes out to 12 microwatts. Wait a moment, what? Like, if you've got a generator at home, it's probably something like a 300 watt or 400 watt generator or even more, who knows? Um, uh, that, that's a lot compared to 12 microwatts. That's 12 millionths of a watt. That's like, you know, the budget of a, a game or budget of a low movie. $12 million. Okay, compared to $1. So 12 millionths of a watt? 12 microwatts? That doesn't sound very practical anymore. Well, how many machines would it take to run a light bulb? I put the equation up here on the screen, and so you can substitute the uh, power in if you want to use different power than the ones we're using. But for box one, it would take 10 trillion machines to run a light bulb. And that's at 50% efficiency as well. Box two, that was the one that uh, would take 55 years. Remember? That one only takes 10 billion machines. Okay, that's a lot better. But what about box three? You know, remember we said box three started out as pretty good at 20 days to make a new box. And, but then it was like, oh, it's only 12 microwatts. That doesn't sound a lot. Turns out box three takes 10 million of those boxes to run the 60 watt light bulb. Whoa, 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 wait a moment. 10 million of them? That's, that's gonna be a lot. So what if you said, hey, I'll take the machines and I'll use them to make more machines. If each box spending its time building more boxes. That's called exponential growth. And the equation is here on the screen for you. In this case, we have uh, our independent variable is time, and our dependent variable is the number of machines. Our time, in this case, will be measured in days. And you'll notice there's another thing in there, r, which is the growth rate, or the machines per day. So how many machines per day is each thing going to make? Well, obviously, that's going to be a fraction, since we said that even the best one is going to take 20 days to make a machine. So we just invert that fraction, and instead of going how many days to make a machine, we say how many machines per day. You see the three on the side here. Uh, these are all in scientific notation, but that comes out to really small amounts. Solve for the number of days at Y bulb. Y bulb is the number of machines needed to run a 60 watt bulb. Do a little bit of algebra. Here's what we get with natural logs. You can use log base 10, it won't change anything. Here's our results. Box one, if we set box one to making more boxes until we had enough to run the light bulb, it would take 1.6 million years. That means that if Homo erectus had found the box in the wilderness over in Africa and had pushed it, the button and turned it on, that it would finally be ready to start running the light bulb today. Definitely not practical. Box two. Box two is going to take 1,200 years. Whoa, a lot better. Wow, okay but not great. That would mean that if Charlemagne in France, Pope Leo III in Rome, or Emperor Kamu in Japan had, around the year 800, found a box and they pushed the button and turned it on, it would be ready today. It would be ready. Like, that doesn't mean it would be running it all the time. It means it would be ready today to start running one light bulb. Okay, well, what about box three? Come on, box three's gotta be Pulling for box three here. Come on, man. Come on, box three. Let's go. Well, box three takes 330 days. 11 months. That's less than one year. But are you really going to wait one year or, well, 11 months just so you can turn on a light bulb? No. 
if you can't get your light bulb working in a few seconds, you just go to the store and get a new light bulb. Nobody's going to wait 11 months for their light bulb. Oh, just, just, just settle down now. You'll be able to read your book in 11 months. But, Mom, I need to read it for tomorrow for my book report. I'm going to Jimmy's house. Yeah, not practical. But, you know, what if we said, hey, instead of having the boxes build themselves, what if we just build a giant factory for it, we commission Ford, mass produce all the boxes, you know, they're only 10 jewels each, that's really, really cheap, we can do that. Then, even if there's a lot of them, uh, we can mass produce them at a really fast rate, it won't take that long. Would it be worth it? Maybe, in the end, for free energy? Would it, maybe, please, even if it had to be millions of boxes, millions and millions and trillions? Well, to answer that question, I, I mean, this is really pushing it, guys, but to answer that, we have to consider the size of the box. Because if each box it fits on your desk, and it's, you know, like the size of a mug, then there's no way it's going to be practical. Heck, if these boxes are visible, then they're probably not practical. Consider having 10 million or 10 billion or even 10 trillion visible things that you can see and you can count. That's just, that's, I mean, okay, maybe maybe you might be willing to do that for one light bulb, but you'd have to do that for every 60, I think if you have a 120 watt bulb, some people do because you want a brighter light. Or maybe you're trying to run your computer, which is a lot more. All of a sudden you're looking at, ugh huge banks of these like imagine server racks if you're a computer person or maybe if you're just the average everyday person imagine like having a couch of nothing but these power generating boxes so how small would they have to be well very really really small even if they were the size of bacteria and bacteria cells is about two micrometers across Box one, which is the 10 trillion machines, at that size would take up 80 liters of space. That is a lot of space. That's 42 liter bottles of Coke, plus extra room for cooling and wiring. Remember, you have to get these, keep these things cool enough, otherwise they might melt or something. You know, we're only looking at breaking the first law, not the second law, and not anything else like, you know, indestructibility or something. Now, if box three were that size, box three was the 12 microwatt one, it was the one joule per day, we, box three could make another box in as little as 20 days and could run a 60 watt light bulb in 330 days if you just set it to making boxes. If box three were the size of bacteria cell, then it might be practical, but it, it's still unlikely. But what would be practical then? None of these things seem practical. Box three, maybe, maybe, I'll, I'll come back to a moment, but just to give you an idea about what would truly be practical, we want a box that can power our houses. Just one box we could just set outside and would just power our houses. That is what we would consider practical. Heck, if we had a battery-sized device for each thing that we used, if everything just ran on batteries and we just said, oh, just put this battery in here and you'll only, you'll never have to replace it, and a computer takes four batteries and your fridge takes eight batteries, that would also be practical. But we might as well just take all of those batteries and put them in a box outside. So there we go. What would be practical? Well, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, the U.S. EIA, the average U.S. resident used 940 kilowatt hours every month back in 2011. 940 kilowatt hours is a weird unit. It's a thousand watts every hour, but you can do a conversion to get that into kilowatt seconds, and then the kilowatt is just uh, joules per second, so you just convert again, and you get 3.384 billion joules. That's right. 3.384 billion. Meh. That's the average U.S. resident, and there's 100,000 average US residents. Some are going to be more, like if you've got a family of five or six or ten, and some are going to be less if you're a single person living alone in a studio or a regular apartment. If you own a business, you're probably using a lot more energy than if you're uh, a monk, you know? So, but the, on average, 3.384 billion joules every month. 
how, what would our box need to be able to do to do that? Well, if every month is 30 days, approximately, then remembering that we, our box is only 50% efficient, our box would have to be 226 megawatts. That's 226 million joules per day of free energy that comes out of nowhere. That is clearly impossible. I mean, if that were, it'd be awesome, but that's what has to be practical. Not only that, but you have to think about size of that box and then all the space needed for coolant and for transformers, just in case the power comes out a little much or a little not enough or something. That would be something you'd have to worry about there. So that's that's what's practical. 3.384 billion joules or 226 megawatts. The best box that we came up with, uh, box three, was 12 microwatts. And what we're saying what's practical is like a million million times better. Actually, it's 200 million million times better. That's, wow. Box three is not practical. <laughs> even though, even though you could uh, make you have it make another box in 330 days, and if it were the size of bacteria, it would easily fit on your desk. It's still not practical. In fact, that brings us to the point that most free energy machines are not. To have one be practical, it has to be incredibly powerful or incredibly, incredibly small. Like, again, if box three were very small, bacteria size or smaller, it would work. Some equations here, if you want to try testing out, a, tweaking a couple variables about power and size and efficiency, there you go. If your power is anything less than the 12 microwatt box, you're going to have to be ridiculously patient or, you know, elves and live for thousands of years. If you can live that long, great. But on a human life scale, it's not looking too good. So there you go, folks. Considerations on free energy. Uh, this might also give you a new impression as to just how powerful the second law is compared to the first. But it should also give you a great impression on just how tightly controlled the universe is. So tightly controlled that not even something as impractical as the very first box that gave us one microjoule per day, 12 picowatts, something that insignificant is still not allowed by the universe. That says something about the universe and about the power of the laws of thermodynamics. So until next time, keep your science on. Thanks for watching. If you like this, please like, uh, subscribe, but most importantly, share and give me some feedback. Let me know what you thought. Hope to see you again soon.